Today, we're going to be talking about a CNBC article uh, that talked about Jack Ma sticking to his goals by asking him these three questions. Short and concise article, and the three questions he asked himself are, what do you have, what do you want, and what will you give up? So what do you have? For me, what do you have is really what's your tool set? What's your current tools? What's your skills? What's your experience that you have today? to start whatever initiative, project, business that you want, Yeah. right? What's that vision? And so, you know, Jack Ma's, the, the article talks about, you know, the example of his founding team for Alibaba. Uh, they didn't have any of the skills that it's required to run a multi-billion dollar business. But it's, so it goes to show you, in my opinion, is that it's not just your skill set, but it's really how do you leverage it? How do you leverage those skills? How do you transfer that into a circumstance, a scenario that's going to make it beneficial? I think, yeah, so one of the hardest things, I don't know what Jack Ma, like before he started Alibaba. He was a teacher. He was a teacher? Right, and that's why he's going back, right? He retired yeah. recently, his, his chairman role or whatever his role is, yeah. and he's going back to teaching. So what was his... Like, what skill did he have? So when Alibaba started, like, how did he even, do you know, like, how they marketed themselves? Was it through education or? No. Like, did he use any skill set of his have own? Have you not read his story? No, like, I haven't. Jack Ma, like, he, he's famous. His story is amazing because, you know, I think the example was he was, he applied for every job there was. Yeah. So I think it was KFC came yeah. into China. And 27 people applied, including himself. They accepted 26. He was the 27th person that they did not accept yeah. his employment. And he kept being rejected through all of these circumstances, but yet persistence, right? Perseverance, his ambition, yeah. got him to be one of the richest people in China today. Yeah. It's amazing, right? So, he's, so his biggest skill set was, I guess, hustle. Resilience. Resilience? Me, well, it's it comes back to his next question, right? Which is, you know, what do you want? I think for me, my humble opinion and kind of take on his story is he was laser focused on what he wanted. Yeah. I don't know if it was, and again, we're probably pretty ignorant of his story, but I don't think he started off saying, hey, I'm going to be the Chinese version of Jeff Bezos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but... You know, like that's kind of what he's created right in Alibaba as, as the platform. But he stuck to what he wanted to do. He wanted to be an entrepreneur and continue to kind of face and learn from all of these rejections. Yeah. And I think that's one of the things that I've learned uh, in listening to and reading about, you know, all these successful entrepreneurs is their ability to accept and learn from rejection and not let it kind of, you know, get you down. I, what's what's interesting and going to the third question, what will you give up? I think his inherent, I think what he has over any startup founder like today, who's like, let's say even like a millennial or like anyone who looks for a level of instant gratification. Like he said in here, don't think you will succeed next year. You have to prepare for 10 years. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of people out there who are willing to give up or sacrifice a lot of like whatever family right. or their per social life for 10 years yeah. all right or even set a goal like oh i'm gonna start this business and it's gonna be you know the thing i go to for the next 10 years like they can't i, I think there's a certain advantage that he had in thinking exactly like but, that but do you think it's no it's just the society isn't wired that way any longer to to think that long term think about you know social media yeah it's all about instant gratification, yeah. right? Like, so if you don't get the 50 likes on your Instagram photo, you're distraught. Yeah. And I think the, you know, especially for millennials and for the young professionals, yeah. that's the kind of mindset they go into their jobs and occupations and careers into is that unless I'm, you know, acknowledged for my value and I don't see my progression, yeah. you know, right away, yeah. then I'm not being successful. Yeah. And that's just been simply wired that way. So it's, I would say it's a tougher challenge to your point mm. to think that long term than it was perhaps for him. Oh, this is what I was going to say. Okay. So with that being said, the, 
I, I think what people struggle with right now is because of this whole level of instant gratification and social media and like it's not really helping it's more of an influence yep. to society what's happening is the the founders of startups now like you got to have a grander vision of what your company wants to be rather than just like as as much as i hate to say it time and revenue sure because as soon as you start thinking about time and revenue to to that capacity and let, letting it influence your business so hard you're missing the grander. So, for example, Elon Musk, when he talks about you know electric cars and all that, and when he built Tesla, if he was only focused on time and revenue, he probably would have given up years ago right. because you know G- GM comes out of nowhere. Sure. You know they have billions of dollars that they can invest in electric cars. Audi, same thing. But he stuck to it, and he's appreciative of all those guys coming in and starting to build electric cars because his grander vision is just humanity and yeah. saving humanity yeah. right and that's like yeah that could be his 10-year vision but that's probably like his lifetime vision but isn't that just your back to and i know we you and i had this conversation the other day when we were talking about elon musk yes yeah. it's it's about social responsibility right too what's the great what are you bringing to the table that's of the greater good yeah. that serves the needs of I'm gonna say society as a whole. Yeah. Right. So Elon Musk is yeah, more responsible ways to energize the planet. Yeah. Right? And um so, you know, fossil fuels and all of this stuff, uh, carbon tax, carbon footprints, it's not cool. It's yeah. not great. So, you know, for him, yeah, it's an enterprise, a for profit organization and initiative, but yeah. it's serving the greater needs of society as a whole. Yeah. So I think and I think that's where again the there's been this more of a spotlight put on social responsibility, right? Initiatives that are beyond just profit motivated. Yeah. So I agree with that. Um, but it is tough. It's tough to think that long-term vision and then to bring it back to the practicalities of today. Well, you may have this vision, but if you can't me pay the bills today yeah. you're never going to achieve your vision so is it so do you feel like this is too harsh of a statement for me to say right now is if you go into if you start a business yeah. with the sole goal of or the sole vision of just becoming the next millionaire you're bound to fail i mean that's a tough question because that's then i'm not here to question what motivates you yeah. right like and if money is your motivator, great. Yeah. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not here to judge. Yeah. And I think people think that they will be judged negatively to say, oh, you know, like, you know, money is what's important to me. Yeah. But I, I don't know. Like, I guess it's so, a tough. I, I don't know. Let me add some insight to that because I, when I was young and naive. Yeah. Which some people would argue is still am. <laughs> that was yesterday. That was yesterday. Yeah. Um, I. I was all I was like revenue driven. I was like cash, cash sure. driven, right? But that it did not work to my detriment because one, it wasn't really me, and two, I started thinking in really nasty ways around. Okay, do I want to build? Do I want to build my agency or build my business around just being so money driven, or do I have a grander vision around what I want to achieve and what I want this company to represent? Sure. So I understand there are some people out there. You know, first person that comes to mind is Ty Lopez, who talks all he talks about is money and yeah. you know instant payout. And I think there is a market for people who want to start a business. And but if you're solely cash focused and you just want a big cash out in the short term, then there is a market for that. But if you're building a long term business and you want to legitimately make a change in the world, then you. If you start a business with that immediate thought process around, like, I just want to be the next millionaire instantaneously, yeah. you're almost bound, I, I feel you're bound to fail. But I that's just so. my thought. I mean, we've taken a, a pretty wild tangent from Jack Ma's article, but here, let me yeah. let me pose the scenario because this is something that I've, yeah, I've thought about yeah. when I was young and brash. And, yeah. Um, is that if it was only about money, okay. you can go and rob banks as an occupation. Ah, you could yeah. go sell drugs, sell arms, set, open sell up arms. a, you know, firearms. Oh, firearms, okay. <laughs> uh, or, you know, 
open up a strip joint. Yeah. Huh. Right? They're le legitimate business. Maybe the strip joint, is, it's a good example. It's a legitimate business. It's an establishment. You could generate lots of money. That's a good point, yeah. But then, you know, as I had kids, you know, my, my daughter was born. It's like, do I want, not even just my daughter. I said, do I want my kids, when they ask me, Dad, what do you do for a living? Yeah. I say, I run a strip joint. Yeah. Is that kind of the message that I want to give my kids, especially my daughter? Yeah. And so if money is your primary motivator, you could say yes, because it's putting food on the table, it's paying for your university, it's buying you nice things. But you got to believe that your life, your you know what you want to accomplish in your life, it extends beyond that. And yeah. so it's really brings it back to what is important for you and what, you know, I'll call it, what's the, the legacy that you want to leave behind to, to your family? Well, as Jacques Ma says, what the fuck do you want, right? So that's actually a really good point because whatever you do throughout your life or whatever you would do achieve kind of is a representation of you because you're the one who's actually built that sure. empire, right? Yeah. So what you actually brought, bring it back to the article, it's actually kind of like as generic as these three questions are, it does kind of encompass what we're talking about because you just said that you're willing to sacrifice or you're willing to give up that lifestyle, making short term, yeah. really fast returns for the sake of your family, for the sake yeah. of like your daughter and what you want them to see as their father figure. Yeah. And that's actually a really key thing to know because I feel some people lose that. I know I lost it when I was building my first business around, okay, cash, cash, cash. Yeah. But then everyone thought of me as this person who's just like, oh, this guy's just a fucking cash grabber. Got it. Right? And it's yeah. like a scary little world to be in. And sometimes you need to suffer through that, but... Yeah, and I think it's 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 also a representation of yourself, right? Yeah. So if you want to be known as the guy that's, you know, runs a strip joint, you know, selling guns out of the back of your car for cash, Yeah. great. If you're not, you're okay with that. You know, who am I to say? Yeah. But if you feel something differently and say, hey, I want to give back. You know, I want to make sure, you know, I help educate the next group of business professionals, which is really kind of where I'm at. Yeah. Uh, in terms of the value and the things that, I, that are important to me now yeah. is to be able to mentor and coach. Yeah. And to kind of share the things that I've learned. Yeah. To be able to kind of help startups. Yeah. founders and that's really kind of why I landed where I did in terms of my the opportunities that I'm trying to create for myself yeah so yeah it, it totally works so do you would you say that these three questions are are, are helpful do you feel like I think they're, they're the bumpers right yeah. along this you know like what I what a cliche the bumpers in the bowling in, in the, the bowling alley bowling as you're way, trying to yeah right as yeah. you're trying to kind of navigate your way to kind of score that perfect strike yeah um it helps kind of just continue to reinforce and, and remind you of what you know uh the things that are important to you yeah but i think it's not the only thing like you can't sit there and say blindly say hey as long as i can answer succinctly these three questions yeah. life's good i don't think so yeah right to you know where does family come into it where does you know, we were talking earlier about uh, work-life balance, you know, uh, you know, money, lifestyle. Yeah. Uh, what are the things that you want to kind of feed your creative, creative stuff? See, now I'm being, now I'm being cynical about these three questions, <laughs> the, the more that we talk about it, because yeah. I'm starting to think this is just, I thought this was a, a good written article, but not the cynical side of me thinking it's actually a very poorly written article, because it's just a nice way. These three questions are literally just a nice way of saying, what do you have? It's like, so, so what skills do you have? What skills do you have? Or what's your existing business, right? Yeah. Where are you going wrong? Where are you going right? What do you, what do you want? Which is essentially just set your goals. Yeah. And what will you give up is essentially saying, okay, what are you willing to eliminate the, what are you willing to sacrifice? But also like elim if looking at it from a business perspective, let's say you already have a pretty sustainable business. Yeah. Like what do you, what, what, like the things that don't work, are you willing to like suck it up and say like, look, this doesn't work, All right? And say like, okay, accept it as failure. You mean? Yeah, yeah. Or it's just saying like, okay, this. For example, if you're running marketing in any way, shape, or form, yeah, and you're doing all these things, like you're sending out flyers and all that, 
because you love to send out flyers, you love to do design, are you willing to give that up if it's not working for uh, you in your favor, right? I mean, that's a great segue into the marketing side. Yeah, it's just a nice right. way of saying that. It's almost like it's applicable. These three questions, as generic as they are, are applicable to so many different, it's just so generic that it's applicable sure. to so many different channels. Um, yeah. And I just don't know like what to think of them because they're so general. So when you, okay, so let me ask you, like, in building your own practice, yeah. if you thought, if you go back and answer these questions for yourself, yeah. are you able to answer those? And does it help, is it a benefit for you to know what those answers are? See, that, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> now you bring up a good point, because I do, I feel I do, like each day, you always have to ask yourself, this is why, like, the cynical part of me and the other part of me is, like, <laughs> always conflicting. Yeah. Because you bring up a good point because every single day you almost need to reinforce yeah. and ask your, and tell yourself these things and ask yourself these things. Okay, what do you want to do? Like, what is your goal, right? What do you do? Are you going to get up? Are you going to get your ass out of bed and go fucking get it? Yep. Yeah. Right? And three, are you willing to, like, elim like, if a friend is calling you being like, yo, let's hang out, let's go get fucking wasted, like... But you got to do this one particular project. Are you going to go see that friend or are you willing to sacrifice that? Exactly. I need to ask myself. That's exactly. So it's generic and transferable to any circumstance. Yeah. But it's applicable in every circumstance, right? It, it, just, that, just that scenario you said for yourself. Use it for a high school student, Yeah. right? Going into grade 12, you know, it's a big year. You got to start thinking about, you know, post-secondary. It's the same questions. You know, what do you have? What skills do you have, right? What do you What do you want? What do you want to accomplish in your grade 12 year, in your senior year? And what are you willing to sacrifice? For? Yeah. It's as simple as that, right? And even in the day-to-day -day life, we were just talking about this before off camera, about social media and how to be, how to be distracted. Because yeah. I'm just going to reiterate it here for video. Uh, Matt Diavella, he's the one who mentioned our greatest tools of creation are also our greatest tools of distraction. So are you willing to give up like being on your Facebook feed and Instagram and being on all those channels all the time when you should really ideally be focusing on whatever content creation and building out your practice and all those different elements. Right. It's funny because this applies to, like you said, to all, all facets right. of life. Interesting. Wow, look at us. Look at us, bring it back full circle. Bring it back, yeah. So, with all that being said, I have a better appreciation for these questions. I I think this is important for us to just kind of close off. Yeah. As I feel like we're hitting a recording limit. I feel like this is a good practice. Because honestly, like, let's, let's face it, this will take less than five minutes each day. Yep. Just to ask yourself. If you ever get lost or if you ever feel lost, to ask yourself these three questions. But... I think it also just comes down to setting goals, yeah. really, and having a dream, having a bigger, grander vision of things. And I think that's what makes life interesting, right? Yeah. Like it's it is about these decisions that you make that kind of forms your experiences. Yeah. And so, yeah, I agree. Like it's just this constant reminder of why you're doing the things you're doing. Why are you willing to sacrifice sleep or you know social gatherings and things like that? Because it's it's important. Yeah. It's important to kind of just constantly re reaffirm that you're doing, you're on the right path, and you're do, thinking about it the right way. And That's my opinion. Exactly, and like having that laser focus at every yeah. single point in time. Yeah. All right. Well, that's our insight for this one. Till cool. next week. <laughs> Bye for now. <laughs>